A ring-shaped conductor with radius 5 centimeters has a total charge of 50 nanoclubes. What is the electric field at a point 12 centimeters east from its center? And also, what is the linear charge density of the ring? So what we're going to do is derive a formula, and then we'll use it to get the answer to this problem. So feel free to pause the video if you want to try it yourself and see if you can get the answer. But let's begin. So let's begin by drawing a circle. Very nice uh, big circle. We're going to turn it into a ring. My drawings are not perfect. And let's say that this is the center of the ring. And 12 centimeters east, we have our point of interest, point P. The distance between the center and point P, let's call it X. And the radius of the ring, let's call it A. Now let's take a segment of this ring, which we'll call DS. That segment carries a positive charge because the whole ring is positively charged. And let's call the charge of that segment DQ. Now, as we know, an electric field always emanates away from the positive charge. So what we're going to do is draw a line from the positive charge to point P. So the electric field is directed away from uh, the positive charge. So here's the electric field E. It has uh, an X component, which we'll call EX, and it has a Y component, EY. The distance between the positive charge and point P is R. Now we're going to draw another picture, but we're going to focus on a different segment of the ring. So here's point P again. This time let's focus on the bottom portion of the ring. So it has a positive charge, DQ. And let's draw the electric field vector that is due to uh, this charge at the bottom. So if we draw an arrow, the electric field vector is directed this way. Now that electric field also carries an X component and it has a Y component. So every segment of this ring will produce an electric field at point P, and we need to add it up. But if we focus on the top and the bottom segments, notice that they create a Y component that is opposite in direction. Here the Y component is going down, here it's going up. So these two, they cancel out, which means that these two segments produce a net electric field in the x direction. These two x components are parallel, so they're additive. It turns out that if you draw a segment on the left side and on the right side, they will have an x component and a z component. If you draw it carefully, you'll see that the z component cancels, but the x component does not. So therefore, the net electric field at point P is directed only in the x direction. All of the y components and the z components of the electric field will cancel due to the symmetry of the ring. So that's the first thing you need to understand. So now let's get rid of this picture. The electric field created by a point charge is this equation. E is equal to kq over r squared. So the electric field created by this little small segment, which we can treat as a point charge, is DE, since the little DQ will create an electric field DE. That's going to be K times DQ over R squared. You can see how it's similar to this equation. If E is created by charge Q, then DE will be created by charge DQ. DE is just a small electric field that is created by a small portion 
of the total charge of the ring. So now that we have this expression, we need to know what we're looking for. Keep in mind the net electric field is simply equal to E sub X. It's equal to the X component. So our goal is to find the X component. That will give us the electric field at point P. So we have DE. So therefore we could find DEX. DEX is going to be DE cosine theta, where theta is this angle. It's also equal to that angle as well. So now let's take this and move it somewhere else. So we know the equation for DE. We already wrote it. It's uh, K dq divided by r squared. Now what about cosine theta? What is cosine theta equal to in this expression? So we know that cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side relative to theta adjacent is x divided by the hypotenuse which is r. So cosine theta is x over r. So therefore, we now have the equation for the electric field, well, DEX. There's only one more thing we need to do. We need to integrate this function. And then that's going to give us the electric field at point P. So let's integrate both sides. Now, we need to realize that as we integrate it from one region of the ring to the other region, x will not change. The distance between the center and point P is fixed. So we need to treat x as a constant. Also, r is a constant. Because a doesn't change, the radius of the ring will be the same. So the distance between this charge and point P will not change. So the only thing that changes as we integrate from one region to the ring back to the other region is q. So therefore, we could say that the antiderivative of dE sub x is going to be, we can move all the constants to the front, kx over r cubed integration of dQ. So what is the antiderivative of dQ? The antiderivative of dQ is simply Q. And the antiderivative of dE sub x is simply E sub x. So the electric field in the x direction, which is the net electric field, is going to be k times x times q divided by r cubed. This is the equation that we want to use. But now what is r? How can we find it? So notice that we have a right triangle, where x and a are the legs of the triangle, and r is the hypotenuse. So based on the Pythagorean theorem, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c is the hypotenuse, which is the same as r, and b can represent x. So r is equal to the square root of a squared plus x squared. So that's another equation that you'll need for this problem. So using these two equations, let's go ahead and calculate the electric field in the x direction or the net electric field. So first, let's calculate R. So we know that A is the radius of the ring, which is 5 centimeters, or 0 0.05 meters. Q is the total charge. That's 50 nanoclooms, and it's positive. X is the distance between the center and point P, which is 12 centimeters or 0.12 meters. So let's calculate R. So it's A squared or 0 0.05 squared plus 0.12 squared. This is basically associated with the 5, 12, 13 triangle. So it should be 0.13 but you can check with the calculator. If you type it in you will get 0.13 meters. So now that we have R, we can use this equation to calculate the electric field. 
So it's going to be k, which is 9 times 10 to the 9. You may also need to know that k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. But if you know the value of k, you don't really need to use that. But you might see this equation pop up in certain physics books. x is 0.12. q is 50 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Keep in mind, nano represents 10 to the negative 9. And r is 0.13, but raised to the third power. So you should get 24,579 newtons per coulomb. At least that's what I got if I typed in everything correctly. So hopefully you got the same thing too. So now that we have the answer for part A, what about part B? What is the linear charge density of the ring? The linear charge density is represented by the lambda symbol and it's equal to the total charge divided by the total length. So the units of lambda is basically uh, coulombs per meter. But for a ring, the total charge is still Q, but the length of the ring is basically the circumference. And this ring has a radius of A. We know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. However, for this particular example, the radius of the ring is represented by A. So we could say that lambda is Q divided by 2 pi A. So we could just plug in the data and uh, get the answer. So Q is 50 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs divided by 2 pi times 0 0.05 meters. So lambda is about 1.59 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs per meter. So that is the linear charge density. You can also describe lambda as being dq over ds. dq is in coulombs. ds is basically a segment of the ring, which is measured in meters. So you can also use this equation to describe lambda. But for this particular problem, this is the best one to use if you need to calculate lambda. Sometimes, if you get a problem that gives you lambda, you need to calculate Q using this equation. It's 2 pi A times lambda, if you ever need to find Q. So let's review the equations that we have so far. So to calculate the electric field at point P, it's equal to K q x divided by r cube. So keep in mind, x is the distance between the center and point p, a is the radius, r is the hypotenuse. Next, you'll need to find r. And r is the square root of x squared plus uh, a squared. And if you need to find lambda, it's q divided by 2 pi a for this problem. And if you need to calculate q from lambda, q is going to be 2 pi a times lambda. And if you need to find or calculate the electric field from q, we can replace q with 2 pi a times lambda. So let's go ahead and do that. So the net electric field can also be described as k times 2 pi times a times the linear charge density times x divided by r cube. 
So if you're given the linear charge density, and if you know the radius of the circle, which is A, and if you have the distance X between the center and the point of interest, then you can use all of that to find the net electric field. So I believe that's all the equations that you need for this particular problem. So if you like this video, feel free to comment in the section below. You can like it as well, share it with your friends. And also, you can check out my channel if you want to find more topics on uh, physics. I have other videos on electric fields, electric potentials, DC circuits, and more to come if you don't see it yet. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.